Okay, so if you're thinking of launching a VC fund, you probably already have a pretty good idea of what venture capital investments are. They're investments in high growth companies in exchange for an equity stake in those companies. But unfortunately, that's pretty much where it stops being super simple and easy to understand. My name's Sam, I'm on the legal team here at Carta, and in this lesson, we're gonna dive into the details of how venture capital funds are legally defined so that you can understand the bigger landscape you're entering when you start a fund. You ready? Let's do it. Okay, so right out of the gate, here's the big thing that people tend to have a misperception about when it comes to venture capital. Venture capital funds obviously make venture capital investments, right? But not all funds that make venture capital investments are venture capital funds. In fact, there are lots of other kinds of funds, like private equity funds and hedge funds, and all these different types of funds can get in on the action and make venture capital investments. So the big question is, what makes a venture capital fund so unique? The short answer is how they're regulated. So let's take a look at what makes a VC fund a VC fund. There's a specific legal definition that describes what a venture capital fund is. Basically, there's this law called the Investment Advisors Act of 1940, and under this act, a venture capital fund has to meet five core requirements. First, it can't invest more than 20% of its total capital in things called non-qualifying investments. We'll talk about what that means in a sec. Second, get ready for some fancy gibberish. A venture capital fund can only borrow or take on other leverage up to 15% of its total capital, and it has to repay any debts within 120 days. Again, if that sounds confusing, don't worry. We're going to explain what that means in just a sec. Third, a VC fund can't allow LPs to redeem their interest in the fund unless there's some sort of extraordinary circumstance. Fourth, a VC fund has to represent to its investors and potential investors that it's pursuing a venture capital strategy. Or, in other words, if you're making VC investments, you gotta tell your investors that's what you're doing. And finally, a VC fund can't be registered as an investment company under the Investment Company Act. Whew, okay, I get it. That's a whole lot of legal jargon. So let's translate each one of these points into plain English to make sure you understand what you're getting into when you start a VC fund. First, we'll go ahead and zoom in on bullet point number one right here. A VC fund cannot invest more than 20% of its capital in non-qualifying investments. All right, so generally speaking, when you make a direct equity investment into a private company, it counts as what we call a qualifying venture capital investment. But there are other types of investments that don't qualify. For example, debt, secondaries, public equities, fund of fund investments, and digital assets like tokens, stablecoins, and NFTs. So what this first rule is basically saying is that the fund cannot invest more than 20% of its money into these other non-qualifying assets. Or in other words, if you put all your money on Bitcoin, you're not a VC firm. All right, next up, let's look at number two. A VC fund can only borrow or take on other leverage up to 15% of its total capital, and it has to repay its debts within 120 days. Luckily, this one's actually pretty simple. Basically, a VC fund can't take on a whole lot of debt and any debt it does take on has to be super short term, as in less than 120 days. Making sense? Okay, number three. A VC fund can't allow LPs to redeem their interest in the fund unless there are extraordinary circumstances. So this one's actually pretty important. It means investors in the fund can't just cash out whenever they want, they have to maintain their portion of ownership in the fund through good times and bad, and they can only cash out at the end of the fund's life cycle. So, What's that life cycle? Well, in venture capital, the life cycle of a fund is usually around 10 years with the option for a one or two year extension. So we're talking about a pretty long-term commitment. The only way an investor can get out of this commitment is under a quote, extraordinary circumstance. And the person who usually gets to decide what counts as an extraordinary circumstance is the GP. Okay, still with me? Let's keep rolling. Number four. A venture capital fund has to represent to its investors and potential investors that it's pursuing a venture capital strategy. This one's probably pretty self-explanatory, but it's really worth noting anyway. When you raise capital for your fund, the LPs, aka investors, have to know that you're pursuing a venture capital strategy. We'll talk more about fund strategy a little later, but for now, just know this. There should never be any surprises for your LPs. Seriously, never. Okay, almost done. Number five, a venture capital fund cannot be registered as an investment company under the Investment Company Act. For now, just file this one away in your brain. We'll go deeper into regulatory requirements a little later on. 
basically, the big thing to know is if you keep your fund within these narrow parameters, you'll save yourself a lot of headaches and compliance down the road. And there you go. So if you meet all five of these criteria, congratulations, you have a venture capital fund. And if all the funds you manage are venture capital funds, then federal laws and regulations say you can be what's called a venture capital advisor. Now, why does that matter? Well, basically, there's this other law called the Investment Advisors Act. And under this act, a venture capital advisor has simpler compliance requirements than other types of advisors. Like, for instance, if you have a large private equity fund or a hedge fund, you'd have to be a registered investment advisor with a whole lot more compliance requirements and restrictions. So just remember, venture capital advisor, registered investment advisor, not the same thing. Anyway, we'll get into those regulations a little later on. But for now, one last little disclaimer. Obviously, this is a general summary of the criteria for qualifying as a VC fund. So as with most aspects of running your fund, you're going to want to check in with your own legal counsel to make sure you're staying inside the swim lanes. OK, so that was an intro to venture capital. Next up, we're going to talk about a really big thing you're going to want to understand when you start your VC fund. And that's how a VC fund is structured. So when you're ready, hit the button down below and let's dive in. Thank you.